Hey guys, Kevin here. Uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on where we're at with the chicken coop. And, uh, and I'll just show you where we're at at this point. Uh, this is uh, the beginning of fall in upstate New York, central New York. And um, as I mentioned before, when I built the walls, I put two layers of polyisocyanurate, a rigid uh, foam board insulation, and staggered the seams uh, all around the walls uh, so that I could cre create a nice seal. And then at the top of the walls, in a second, let me see if I can zoom in over here. At the top of the walls, you can see the insulation was stopped right up there at the, the very top. So it's continuous all the way underground uh, right to uh, where the roof attaches, uh, where the rafters uh, attach. And then uh, what I've been doing is sort of uh, alternate layering of almost all the roof. Uh, hope this, this shows up. I know it's in a shadow there. But I put one layer down in, in one area and then use the next layer and try to offset the seams so that we could have as little air flow through potential cracks in the insulation as possible. I did have some problems. We've had quite windy and rainy weather and this insulation board, although it's quite light, they're four by eight sheets, uh, if the wind catches it you go airborne on a, on a, uh, a windy day. And so, uh, and I did not get it all uh, anchored down well uh, for the first windstorm, which I just, uh, it got to about 15 mile per, hour, mile per hour winds at our weather station, but it's, we're right over here close to the uh, higher, not a higher elevation, but right over uh, to our west there where the wind comes from. I've built up the property so much that uh, the soil there, there's, there's a, a six to eight foot drop off and then the winds come right up over this area. And so I think we're probably about 22 mile per hour winds that hit and it ripped quite a few of the sheets right off of the, the roof. So I went to these uh, aluminum anchors, uh, plates with, with uh, uh, about four and a half inch screws and I got everything anchored down pretty darn well as I progressed through the process. Uh, lots of compound miter joints <laughs> and uh, and I just have this one section to finish up. Now on top of this insulation ultimately there will be um, uh, two by fours which will support the uh, the metal roofing that's going to go on top of this. Uh, so there's a quite a bit more to do and I'll try to get it, get the roof on and get the doors and windows in before the snow flies. That's my my uh, hope anyway so that I can work inside during the winter months and with a lot of these building materials out of my workshop I should be able to do some of the other projects as well. Uh, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an update so you can see it's really important the way that I uh, build the buildings that I do to conserve as much energy as possible. Um, and it not only uh, conserve the energy, but, and I'll show you one other aspect of, of how this is. So the building, the structures on the inside, uh, structural integrity is maintained by the two by sixes, the two by eights and all. And as you can see here, uh, there's, a, there's a space for air to flow. And this is an open envelope design building. And that's how we built my house years ago, but we used post and beam construction. Uh, so we'll just go upstairs for a second and I'll show you, even though it's dark up there. It's so important to have good airflow if we're going to be drying materials and maintaining the health of the, of the chickens that will be down below. So as you can see uh, by the light, where the air actually uh, comes up through. And so that's so important. There's only one section where the two peaks from the greenhouse where it attaches, uh, where I have extra stru structural integrity in that area, uh, where there's minimal airflow in that area. But we have almost a 360 degree angle all the way around uh, this structure, airflow moving through. That way I can maintain temperatures uh, in each section and have air exchanges that are appropriate. Here comes one of my helpers now. Yeah, sunshine. <laughs> so 
So that's it for now. I just wanted to give you a bit of an update to show you the insulation and how it's progressing at this point. I have more work to do and uh, eh, I'll give you an update as soon as I can. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye bye now. Hi folks, Kevin here. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, at least the beginning structure of um, uh, the, the beginning steps of constructing the overhangs. Uh, as you can see, the, the building uh, is completely enveloped in insulation. There's no uh, air penetrations or spaces. As I showed on previous videos, the 2x4s and rafters, the insulations, there's 3 inches of polyisocyanurate, a rigid uh, foam board that uh, completely uh, covers the uh, structure of the building. And that goes right down to the footer and all the way up the wall continuously over the roof, back down the other side of the roof, down the other wall, all the way down to the footer again. And that's so we use less energy to heat and cool the building. And as a result, when you make this, uh, construct the building in this manner, uh, your rafters don't don't provide an overhang. And in this part of the country, uh, in the uh, northern hemisphere at the 43 degrees latitude uh, by the Great Lakes, our, uh, we get such heavy snow loads that we uh, during the winter months. Let me start off with that. Um, a uh, two-foot overhang will allow adequate light penetration because the sun is low in the sky to go in through your windows and help provide radiant heat. Where a two-foot overhang in this area will also cover your second floor windows, shade them so that there's no heat gain during the summer months. Uh, I'm making this overhang a little bit shorter mostly because of the, the need to make sure that I never have to redo this roof again in my lifetime. Uh, this is going to be a metal roof and I'm constructing the uh, overhang structure now on the uh, most of the areas of the roof. There's only two gable ends and that's where the kind of like a uh, uh, the triangles on the end. The rest of the, the roof is all hips, uh, hips and valleys. And uh, the way I'm doing this is I'm just going to turn the camera around. Uh, you can see that I've taken a 2x6 and I've put a 45 degree uh, miter cut all along the bottom edge of that. And then the next step of, of that is taking my predetermined overhang and I put a 45 degree angle on that, slide it up underneath, put some very long uh, screws through this these uh, uh, purling braces and that extends my overhang. Uh, then I put additional supports for the nailers going down the purlings down here. Now uh, these are all different uh, pitches so the I'm sorry I gotta set this board down. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the on this part of the roof, it's a 12-12 pitch, meaning that for every uh, in, uh, for every 12 inches that we go in horizontally, we're going in going up 12 foot, uh, 12 inches vertically. So it's a 45 degree angle. So these angles are 45 degrees on the uh, overhang edge as well as the part where I attach to my uh, support. Uh, these with this design. Uh, as the weight of the snow, and we get tremendous amounts of snow here, like last season we had just over 14 foot of snow, and the season before just over 13 foot. The snow, if it does, um, does remain on the roof, there's quite a bit of snow load, and that's one of the reasons why I've got pretty decent pitches. The lowest pitch that I have is a 612 pitch. Um, and with a metal roof, the snow should slide off more easily. I don't want to be getting up on the roof during the winter months and shoveling it off. That's a, uh, a part-time business all winters, that and snow plowing that, that people have in this part of the country. 
So I just wanted to show you the, the initial stages to building this overhang. Uh, there's a much, much more to box in the soffits down here and for more additional support. But there's this design uh, is a way of uh, giving yourself an overhang even though you have a completely enveloped insulation uh, around your structures. Uh, this is similar to what I did with my, my house uh, over 30, I guess 35 years ago now. Well, again, this is Kevin. I just wanted to show you where we're at at this point. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.